I am going to start right from the very beginning. Um, what is a DTP? What does DTP even stands for? Um, well, it stands for Doctoral Training Partnership. Um, it's a one route to getting a PhD. Um, and it's uh, Doctoral Training Partnerships are um, funded by UKRI which is UK Research and Innovation, which is a government body. So it's all funded by taxpayers' money. There are a number of different research councils within UKRI. And the research council that funds us is NERC, the Natural Environment Research Council. And essentially, we're a body within the university. We're almost like a sort of a quasi department um, in that we admit students um, but they actually then will carry out their actual projects within, within departments such as biology, earth sciences, archaeology, geography, and all the rest. Um, so uh, on the slide here, I've tried to give um, an idea of the, the different sort of areas that are contained within a doctoral training partnership. What are the key elements? So uh, one of the most important elements, I think, for most students is the funding. Um, all of our offers uh, that we make to students every year come with a full funding package. And that means your course fees are paid. You get a tax free stipend, which is equivalent to the UKRI minimum stipend every year. This year, 23 to 24, that's £18,622. Um, and you also get a research grant. Um, it's a single lump sum of £8,000, um, which if you have a particularly expensive project, can actually be upgraded um, to as much as £12,000, but you have to apply for additional money. As well as the funding, a really important point about um, DTPs is that they admit a, a cohort of students. So we have, you know, between 16 and 20 students that we admit every year and they form quite a tightly knit group of friends and, uh, uh, and, and they provide a support network throughout the time that you're um, carrying out your, your research degree. So you don't feel isolated you, you don't feel alone you always have a group of people um, uh, across a range of disciplines and this is the next fundamental point um, because DTPs are so broad um, uh, your cohort will contain students from a wide range of different subjects and you'll get to know them and you'll get to talk about each other's subjects and you'll get to know about different research methods and um, different research ideas. And it, that cross fertilization, as we call it, um, can really help you when you're building your own project. Um, so that's something that almost happens, bubbles away in the background. Um, but we do try and also foster that during the training, um, during the training program. Um, we have a number of partners um, that uh, are, part, are uh, allied with the program, external partners, um, all of which you can see on our website. Um, and these can be really helpful in providing additional support, added value to your uh, research project. Things like they, they can help with finding fieldwork sites or they might provide additional mentoring or they might provide additional funding to your project in the form of, of case, um, which is something else we'll go into. I should actually say here. Um, this presentation does come with a bit of an acronym warning. There are uh, tons of acronyms associated with uh, PhD studies at DTPs. Um, <laughs> CASE is one of those. I don't think anyone even remembers what the acronym CASE stands for, but uh, it basically means when a partner adds funding to your project of a, a thousand pounds or more per year, and they host you for a period of time uh, when you do an internship, um, and uh, they uh, co-supervise your project as well. Um, so uh, case is something that's very important to NERC. And so when you're developing your projects, especially if you're involving a partner, we'd always ask you to think about, you know, can you get that partner to case your project by giving you a bit of 
extra funding. Um, a crucial point about doctoral training partnerships is the word training. Um, so you're funded for four years, which is more than most normal uh, funded PhDs. Those would normally be like three years or three and a half years. But uh, DTPs offer four years worth of funding. And this is because of the training requirement that students have. So we allocate around about six months of training time as part of your PhD. Now, some of that happens in the first term. In fact, probably about three months worth of that will happen in, in the first term. Um, if When you join the, the DTP, you also join the DTC, another acronym that stands for the Doctoral Training Centre. And that's an actual physical building in which there are several programmes like our DTP housed. So there's a BBSRC DTP, which is Bioscience and Biotechnology. Um, uh, and I won't go into all of them, but there are various others. We're all housed together and we all offer various training courses which are open uh, to the other DTPs, more or less, all of them are open to other DTPs and CDTs, Centres for Doctoral Training. Um, so uh, in term one, there's um, there's quite a full training programme. It, it's full time, 9.30 to 5 p.m. most days of the week. Um, and this will cover topics such as introduction to programming or software carpentry. Uh, NERC has a specific NERC related course, which is called the Earth System. Uh, and we also offer numerical methods for um, those with highly quantitative first degrees. There's statistics courses. Uh, you can have MATLAB as, as well. And so there's, there's quite a, a, a wide range of hard skills courses that you can take in the first term. Um, and uh, some of those will be shared with other training programs. We also do a thing called the Grand Challenge Seminars, which is a cross program event, which starts in the first term, where students will gather together across programs and they will plan eight seminars, um, outward facing public seminars to be um, delivered in term three, what Oxford calls Trinity term, but it's, it's the third term of your first year. And there'll be one a week in the summer term. And they're quite big events. You know, we um, we get you know, world leading people to come to Oxford um, and to speak publicly about topics that our students decide and they plan the events entirely. Um, and that's a really great way of getting to know the students in other programmes that are housed within the DTC. And it it gets um, it gives you the opportunity to learn event planning and organizing skills, which are really valuable, actually, especially when you're an early careers researcher, because you'll always be lumbered with the job of planning the departmental seminars. You know, I think people people always get new arrivals to take on jobs like that. So if you've got previous experience with organizing big events like this, that will stand you in really, really good stead. Um, also in term one, we offer um, graduate research seminars, which are actually organized by our students. And those are divided up into um, three streams. Um, so you'll participate in those. So in term two, the training eases off a lot. Um, you, there will still be some training that's more focused towards helping you with developing your projects and writing your project proposal. Um, There'll also be some advanced skills training. I think we have um, quite a lot of courses um, that the um, atmospheric physicists uh, will find useful. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it's, I would say, front loaded into, into the first four weeks or so of term. Uh, we also have um, a partner sand pit in, in term two, which is a lot of fun. That's two days of um, working with some of our partners on challenge topics that they put forward and uh, trying to come up with um, ideas for addressing those challenges and then pitching those um, ideas to to a panel, panel of the partners. Uh, that's always it's a lot more fun than it sounds, believe me. Um, so then after you transfer out to your department to begin your research project um, in term three, you will carry on training throughout 
throughout your time. Um, but you will do this selectively and in a, in a very tailored way to your project. So we, we hand over the ownership really of your training to you at that point. You can identify courses that you need to take um, and you can organize them and go on them. Your, your research grant, the RTSG that I talked about earlier, Research and Training Support Grant, um, that is designed to help you pay for your costs of training courses that you might identify and also for, for field work costs and conferences and things like that. Um, and the, the final thing that's really uh, important um, uh, in DTPs is outreach. Um, it's partly it's partly to do with our, our kind of very renewed focus on EDI um, in trying to spread the word and, and, and make available um, this kind of training, this kind of funding to a far more diverse pool of applicants. And this really starts with outreach to schools, um, trying to get people um, across the board enthused about environmental research um, and the need for people from all walks of life to be invested in protecting our planet and in the future of our planet. Um, so uh, DTPs are really trying to be at the forefront of this kind of outreach. And um, we've been doing some um, really great stuff. So our students rather, I should say, have been doing some really amazing and innovative uh, kinds of outreach, which I will let David talk a little bit about um, in the next session. Um, so uh, I hope that has explained a little bit more about um, what DTPs are and what they're for. I'm going to stop sharing that slide now um, and have a little look at the Q&A to see if there are any questions. Are international students allowed? Um, that's an excellent question. Yes, they are. We have funding. I think we can fund up to 30% every year, international students. And you would be um, you would qualify for the home fees status, but I mean we would pay the fees for those anyway. So um, yes, it is worth applying if you're an international student. Is a master's degree a requirement? No, it's not. Um, it can be a, an advantage, but I would say around about a third, a quarter to a third, of our offers every year are made to candidates who only have a bachelor's. Um, and does the DTP provide full tuition for international students? All students on the DTP are treated exactly the same. There's no difference. So yes, uh, you would get the, the full tuition. Are there full cohort events training in later years? Um, yes, there are. So we, we offer advanced courses, usually in Hillary term, and that's term two and term three every year. Sorry, there are so many uh, Oxford terms I must try and avoid. Um, uh, there are. And, and the one actually one of the things every year that's really good fun is the student conference, which is open across all years. And we uh, students all get together and they deliver little short papers on their research. They present to each other. Uh, there's a competition, there are prizes, uh, there's a party afterwards. Um, so that's definitely like a whole program event that we run every year. And there are also advanced training courses that we run in term two and term three, which are open to everybody. So that would be things like, you know, the intermediate GIS course um, or something called smart modeling strategies or mixed effects models in R. Those are all open across the board. Um, do we have any specific guarantees for diverse individuals? Um, I'm not sure entirely what that question means, but we certainly um, will, um, we ask um, candidates to complete a contextual statement if they feel that uh, we need additional information about their background that would help us to um, sort of uh, uh, awarded additional points, example, for someone that maybe had an educational disadvantage um, or, you know, difficulties in their earlier life. Uh, we could we can make um, uh, 
extra allowances for those. So we would we would allow candidates to give us a contextual statement that gave us, and that's that's you know that's kept private to the assessors. Um, that would allow us to kind of award additional points for um, for diverse candidates. Um, do we choose a department when applying to the DTP? And if so, are we restricted to that department after admission? Um, you apply to a research stream, not to a project or a supervisor or a department. It can usually become quite obvious when you're making an application, what department or departments would be relevant to you and to your interests, but you are not, um, you're not actually connect, linked to a department until the point where you really submit your research proposal. And that is at the beginning of the third term. So you're not restricted. When you're offered a place, you're offered that place with funding. And that funding is attached to you, not to any possible supervisor or project that you might have mentioned in your application. So you actually have quite a lot of freedom in the first couple of terms to change your mind. Um, and what departments do participants generally join? OK, so we have eight departments in the DTP. You can see a list of these on our website. I can never remember all of them off the top of my head, but we've got archeology, span geography, earth sciences, um, biology, maths, physics, uh, chemistry, engineering. That's eight, yeah, that's all eight. Um, so it would usually be one of those. But you could also do a co-supervision, say, with another department like materials or computer science or something like that. Um, and we also encourage co-supervisions with external partners. Um, can the DTP be part time? Uh, yes, actually, NERC require us to be able to offer um, part time PhDs and we can do that. The only exception would be in term one. Uh, we can't really do term one part time because the training is all, you know, full time. Um, but if if students can actually um, uh, find the time to attend term one full time, then after that point, we can arrange for part time. Are peer reviewed publications required? No, they are not. Absolutely not. Uh, I don't know where this myth arose that you have to have peer reviewed publications to get a place, but no, that's that's absolutely not required. Some some students have them, but it's honestly not fair to expect undergraduates to have peer reviewed publications by the time they finish their degrees. Um, you're on a visa that states that you have no access to public funds. Can you still apply? Um, I would say Yes, you can, um, but I would probably have to check that with our visa office or we would have to take that away and we would have to double check with the visa office. If you were offered a place, you would apply for a different visa. You would apply for a tier four visa and that would mean that you had student status. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that the answer to that would be yes. Um, our courses in the first two semesters mandatory across biology, climate physics, etc., or are they limited to the chosen broad theme? Um, again, I'm not entirely sure what that means. I think the well, the only the only course really in the first term that's kind of across NERC streams would be the Earth System. And all students attend all streams of that because it's an interdisciplinary program. So, yeah, we would expect students to attend courses across streams um, because, yeah, that's how you get to know what's going on in other research streams. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you very much <laughs> for the amazing explanation so far. Please, what PhD programmes stand a higher chance of getting this DTP scholarship? Um, each stream in the DTP has an equal number of places, but what? Um, but we have a lot more applicants applying to the biodiversity stream. So in fact, 
if you're applying to the biodiversity stream, you probably stand a lower chance of getting a place. Um, but uh, that's, a, that's about as far as it goes. There are equal numbers of places allocated per stream. Is there a fee to apply? And is there a way to waive this? At some point, they are going to abolish the application fee to Oxford. Um, I think this kicks in next year, but that's what they said last year. So as of now, there is a fee to apply. It's £75. There is a way to waive this. And this is done on a case by case basis. So if you wanted to waive the application fee, the best way to do that would be to email me directly and we can manage that on a one-to-one on -one basis. At which point are we required to contact the supervisor? Um, we always advise contacting potential supervisors as part of your research. Um, so uh, I would start contacting supervisors now and just talking to them about possible ideas for your research collaborations. Um, but you don't actually confirm your supervisor until term two, term three, term two, when you're really writing your research project. Will the stipend for 23, 24 be the same as 24, 25? Uh, the stipend usually increases each year. So it, it's, uh, it hasn't remained the same year on year for about the last 15 years. So it will increase every year. Um, is the DTC the only department to take part in the admissions process? Um, so while it's the DTP, uh, we're part of the DTC, but it's the DTP that will take that manages the admissions process. But we always get um, applications reviewed by a departmental reviewer. And I will go into that in more detail in my application process step by step presentation, which is a bit uh, which is a, a bit later in the day. Is it possible to do internships or academic placements? Yes, uh, and we encourage this and we can give you extra funding to do this. Um, does applying too early uh, or ne right near the deadline affect the application decision? No, it doesn't. Uh, we look at all applications once the application deadline is passed. Um, can the requirement for first class or upper second be alternatively demonstrated by a master's degree? A master's degree will usually trump a bachelor's, but again, sometimes that, that depends um, on the, in, the, the individual case. Um, so that's all I can really say specifically about that. But um, yeah, if you have a, an excellent master's, it's worth applying, even if you've got a 2-2, because that might indicate you're on an upward trajectory. Can I already apply to the DTP if I've already got a supervisory project? Yes, you can, um, but you still would have to go through the whole um, submitting your project proposal, rewriting it or, or writing it in your own words. Um, how long does a term last? That's a good question because for undergraduates in Oxford, it's eight weeks, but for graduates in Oxford, every term is that eight weeks plus the vacation afterwards. So term one is three months. Term two is four months. Term three is six months long because it contains the vacation as well. Um, so you don't need a potential supervisor uh, to submit your application, but you should talk to potential supervisors, as I've described. Um, how would you describe DTP students in general compared to traditional DPhil students? Um, ultimately, you will be a traditional DPhil student, but you will have a class, if you like, you'll have a you'll have a cohort, a class that you're part of. So you hopefully won't feel isolated, which sub traditional DPhil students might. Um, speak a bit more about the option of committing full time to the first term and part time thereafter. Um, not really. We do need you to be full time in term one. Um, but once you've done that, you can then um, apply to us and we can, and let us know if would you want to go 50-50 or how you want to do it. And we can organise that um, and we would do that with you one-to-one. -one. Not that many students do take that option. 
um, because obviously it lengthens the time, the period of time that you're doing your PhD, but, but it can be done. Um, are applicants required to submit a research proposal? No, the statement of purpose is enough. Um, what's the rate of acceptance? Well, we have 16 places or thereabouts, usually about 300 applications or so. Um, and we've got quite a lot more questions popping up, but I'm aware that we are now one minute before, um, before David's presentation. So I will, um, I will save this Q and A and go through and see if I can um, type up some answers to these, or it's um, uh, quite entirely likely that some of these questions will be answered um, at a later point in the day. So um, thank you all uh, very much uh, for uh, all your all your amazing questions for this session. Um, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna hand over to David. David, I think I saw you there. 